Robert Penn Warren was known to his readers and his friends as one of the greatest literary minds of the 20th century. He not only excelled at poetry, but also fiction, short stories, and even children's novels. His work has far surpassed anything he could have hoped for during his life, as it is still studied in many countries to this day. If you looked at what most people are doing when they're 18 or 19, you just call it juvenilia, and you just sort of dismiss it as a learning process. Robert Penn Warren was born in Guthrie, Kentucky on April 24, 1905. He spent most of his childhood running around the town of Guthrie with his close friend Kent Greenfield. While living in Guthrie, many situations altered Robert Penn Warren's life, but one incident in particular changed his life plan completely. His ambition had always been to be a naval officer and he had received an appointment to Annapolis Naval Academy. But because of an accident which happened at his home, he and his brother were in the yard and he was lying on the ground behind a hedge and his brother on the other side of the hedge threw a stone or a piece of coal or something and struck Warren in the eye. And that resulted in the loss of one his eyesight in one eye. So he had to resist the idea of a Naval Academy, of course, is because it was no longer in perfect physical condition, and took his second choice, which was Vanderbilt. However, he graduated high school at a very young age, so his parents sent him to Clarksville High School to do his senior year again, after which he attended Vanderbilt University and then went to further his education at Berkeley, Yale, and Oxford. Robert Penn Warren was also a professor at a multitude of universities and received numerous awards, such as three Pulitzer Prizes, two for poetry, and one for fiction. If you, if you look at his early phase, when he's still a college student at Vanderbilt, um, he is he's very much a poet. And isn't it interesting that a simple accident completely changed the whole course of his future life? What is difficult about Robert Penn Warren and and dealing with his with his texts, uh, it, it's that he is so wide ranging. Uh, he is so productive in so many areas. So you end up breaking it down in terms of what was he emphasizing at a given time in his life. Robert Penn Warren wrote a lot of his novels by pulling on experiences and memories, especially those in Guthrie. His first novel, he turned to one of his first memories, Night Rider, which is the story of the Black Patch War. Warren could remember his father taking him out and holding him up on his shoulders to watch, uh, at, at a certain point, the Black Patch War had escalated to such a point that the governor had to call in the militia. And they were bivouacking right down by our railroad, just across from our depot. And uh, I always think of that when, uh, with Knight Rider, he went, it was his first novel, and he went back to one of his first memories. And that that really marks a break. So you can still think of him as a poet, but, but from 1939 through the 1940s, he's paying a lot of attention to fiction. Robert Penn Warren published a plethora of works ranging from poetry and fiction novels to textbooks and even two children's books. In 1952, he married Eleanor Clark and had one daughter and one son with her before passing away from cancer in 1989. But even through his struggles with his illness, he continued to write. He especially wrote about his home, Guthrie. What's amazing with Warren is, is, that, is that in his later years, he is still writing and is, is, still, uh, is still a world-class writer. He's, he is, I think, one of the few poets 
who authentically goes from being a modern poet to becoming a postmodern poet uh, within, within his long life. Uh, so it keeps evolving and developing during the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and even you know, doing quality poetry uh, in, the, in the 1980s when he's, a, when he's an 80-year-old man. Every novel that he wrote, other than All the King's Men, has its beginning somewhere in Kentucky. Uh, uh, what's remarkable to me is is that uh, it is is that he managed to do it all. That he did so many things at such a remarkably high level. But of course, dark came, and I can't recall what county it was for the life of me. Montgomery, Todd, Christian, I know them all. Was it even Kentucky or Tennessee? Perhaps just an image that keeps haunting me. No, no, in no mansion under earth, nor imagination's domain of bright air, but solid in soil that gave it its birth. It stands, wherever it is, but somewhere. I shall set my foot and go there. Thank you.